In his second letter to the church at Corinth, the Apostle Paul described the agony and pain of living with a thorn in his side, which had become an obstacle in his life. When Paul asked the Lord to remove that obstacle, that thorn, God responded, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is perfect in weakness. As we celebrate these graduates today, let us remember that when things seem dismal, when we feel like our hope is lost, God's grace is more than sufficient. Graduates, you've overcome so many challenges. You made so many sacrifices to arrive at this moment. The path may not have been easy, but through God's grace, through the support of your loved ones, and through the encouragement of your Coastal Alabama family, you've accomplished many of your goals. Today, let us celebrate your commit commencement. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly, giving you thanks for your grace. We know that your grace is more than enough to cover our inadequacies, remove all obstacles, and to move us forward in life. We thank you for these graduates, Lord. We thank you for their families. And we thank you for all who have supported them throughout these years. We pray that you can continue to bless this administration, to bless this faculty, to bless the staff, the students, and our distinguished speaker. And Lord, as we celebrate today, we ask that you continue to cover us in your love and in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I was sitting there thinking about how, how beautiful and how cultured that was. And uh, I remember my first year, really during my first month as president uh, here 38 years ago, uh, my first event, official event I, I attended 
here in our gymnasium back at, uh, at Faulkner State, what was Faulkner State Junior College then, my first official event was a wrestling match. I remember Andre the Giant, the Tasmanian Devil, and I've forgotten who else was there. And that was my first wrestling match, and I was completely fascinated by it, and I enjoyed it. But you know, I've come a long ways. Look around here. I mean, we've got these singers, and what a beautiful job they did. And uh, we have all of you folks here to uh, come, to be with us tonight to, uh, to celebrate this, this great occasion and, and this great milestone in uh, our graduates' lives. I'm old. Some of you've noticed. I am 75, 75, 75. I knew at the earlier graduation and shows you, shows you how old I am. I forgot between now and then. But I am 75 years old. I have lived 27,000, I think it's uh, 562 days I've been on this earth. Now, I was reading a little after that that the average lifespan of an American male is only 70 years old, which is 22,500 and something days. You know, that was a sobering thought. I'm living on borrowed time. I need to make, I need to enjoy every minute that I'm here and every day that I'm here and every opportunity that I'm here. And don't you go feeling sorry for me because I'm an old man. I will be leaving at the end of this month on my annual motorcycle trip across country with my lovely wife, Peggy. So um, I'm here because I want to be here. I'm here of all of the places in the world I could be tonight, I could have retired so many years ago and I have so many people sometimes asking me, when are you going to retire? But I love what I'm doing and this is what I love most, what we're doing here tonight. Even though this is the fourth graduation that we've had in the last two days, this is the last, this is the Omega the last yesterday morning in uh, Monroeville, Alabama, was the Alpha. So yesterday I spoke at two graduation ceremonies on our, for our other campuses. And today we have the second of our graduation exercises. We had one earlier today. Graduates, you are part of a graduating class of over 600 people this year. They're not all here tonight. They, they, they were here earlier today. They were here, they were there yesterday in Monroeville and they were yet there last night in Bruton. In fact, coastal Alabama and this is only our second year of being in existence. Coastal Alabama is now officially the largest community college in the state of Alabama by credit hour production. That means our students at Coastal produce more credit hours a year than those at Jefferson State and Birmingham and Decatur, uh, uh, Calhoun and Decatur and all around. In fact, we're, we're larger than several of our four-year schools. It's not our largeness, though, that, that makes us special. What makes us special is that we're family. And you part of, you're part of our family. And we were happy when you came here, most of you two years ago, and I, I spoke to you as incoming freshmen. And we're happier tonight because you have completed the first two years. You've earned your associate degree. I give them a hand. Uh, yeah, it wasn't easy. 
Wasn't easy getting here. And tonight, you're not going to be finished with that journey. My mind and my heart was touched so much this afternoon between our first service and, and, and tonight. And the number of students who came by as we were relaxing there in the Crimson Room, several of them were crying and hugging teachers who meant so much to them in your journey. And those who, these were students who had just graduated. They were talking about how so very much they, they were going to miss here. And you're going to miss here when you leave. Talking about how special a place this is. And you're going to find out how special when you leave and wherever you go into that university or college of your choice. That career that you're going to be taking, if you're going to be a nurse or a welder or uh, some, of the, some of you who are completing your technical education tonight, you're going to realize what a special place this is. And every one of those students who came by independently of each other and were crying and laughing and classic example of mixed emotions were just sharing their feelings. They, like throughout the time that I've been here, or saying, if you just were for your college, I would stay. I don't want to leave. Listen, I know that feeling. I went to a community college up in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. I couldn't, I wasn't smart enough to get into Alabama. So at that time, uh, so I know what that college meant to me. I transferred on to Alabama and I've told people, if I, for some reason, were to inherit uh, millions of dollars or uh, it, I win the jackpot, I would give my money to that community college in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and to Coastal Alabama Community College. As much as I love Alabama, all I graduated and all my children, this is where my heart is. This with you is where my heart is. And my heart is still up in the Smoky Mountains at that little small community college that I was so privileged to be able to attend. Listen, what a great achievement in your life. What an opportunity you have before you. And what you're going to hear tonight are some words that are going to encourage you so don't stop, don't stop, go on. If you've been prepared to be a welder or an aviation, or a career in aviation, and we have some of our new aviation graduates here in this graduating class and earlier, if it, whatever that field is, you continue, continue to perfect your skills so you can advance and you can have additional milestone lives, days in your life. And those of you who are fin uh, finishing up your associate degree, go on wherever it is. If it's Alabama, if it's Auburn, it's West Alabama, South Alabama, go on. This is a milestone night for you. And I can tell you that in your lives, from my own experience, like these days, these milestone days and events, they're very limited. They're limited only, though, by what we do. Now, you can name some of them. What is a milestone event? Well, the day you were born, the day you die, uh, the day you get married, the day you, some of us, are, no, no, not us, some of us, all of us, that will get divorced. There's a life after divorce. I got, there's mine right there, my sweet bride. It was a milestone day. A milestone day is when your first child is born 
milestone day is grandparents when your first grandbaby's born. A milestone day is one of those special events in your life. They're rare. And they're so very special. Now, you'll make your own uh, uh, milestone event. Tonight's a milestone event for you. But what you have tonight is an opportunity to go forward and make so many of those milestone experiences. You didn't get here by yourself, though. You know, no matter, you're proud, justifiably so. Stick your chest out, hold, hold your head up. Leave here and go celebrate. Go to the beach or do, do whatever you'd want to do. Kick your feet up, relax for a little bit. But it's not over. And you didn't get here by yourself. You didn't get here by yourself. Let's recognize some of those who got you where you are tonight. How about you parents? Why don't you stand up? Stand up, you parents. Some of you are thinking, you know, I paid this money for, for, for my son or daughter or wife or husband to go to coastal Alabama for these two years. And here's that man up there talking about him to go, go on to college. I thought I was finished writing these checks. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> You're not. Hey, how about you grandparents? Why don't you stand up? <laughs> hey, don't be shy. Hey, folks, if you haven't gathered this by now, this is a happy event. This is a celebration. Grandparents, thank you. How about the children? You children. Now, some of these children are too small to stand on their own. There you are right over there. Hey, you husbands and you wives and you spouses, stand up. <laughs> I know there's some aunts and uncles in here. Stand up. Let us recognize you for the role you played in these lives. Now, you cousins, I'm not going to forget about you. <laughs> if you're a cousin, stand up. How about all you sweet things, you girlfriends and your boyfriends and your fiancés? <laughs> Sit up. Stand up. How about you friends? If you're a friend of one of these graduates tonight, stand up. Now there's, <laughs> there's a group of people here that think I've forgotten about you. How about all you in-laws standing up? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I want to just briefly recognize this group of people. And I, I say briefly because I have to stop myself. I've been here for 38 years. And in those 38 years, I've had the privilege and the honor to offer a job to everybody you see on this stage. It was a privilege and honor 
because they've let me share with them the educating of the people who come to us and trust us to do the best for you. This group of people have gone to school for a number of years and years. They've trained in their areas of technology and skill. They've studied, they've worked, they grade papers at night, prepare lectures and prepare demonstrations for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to enrich your lives, to educate you, to train you, to inspire you, to challenge you. And they've done a good job. And I count myself fortunate as the president of this institution to one have had the wisdom and the good sense enough to offer them a job. And secondly, to let them do their jobs with as little interference as an administrator can possibly do. I know nothing about chemistry. I know nothing about biology. I mean, goodness gracious, I couldn't even get into the University of Alabama. You know, I can, you know, I was talking, you know, somebody was talking today, one of our graduates talking about the, uh, I don't, uh, they were talking about some sort of math that I didn't even know what they were talking about. Uh, but I was smart enough to employ these people and say, do your jobs. And they've done it. We're family. I'm proud of being a part of this family. Thank you. Thank you. Listen. <laughs> we have some additional special guests. I've already mentioned and embarrass my wife, Peggy. Uh, Peggy is sitting next to Representative Baker's wife, uh, Kaki. Uh, we've, we've had the pleasure of getting to know her through all these years and she's a retired educator and uh, uh, we're just always so happy. Kaki, we're, we're delighted you could, you could be with us again tonight. Th stand up and let these folks say hello to you. We have Vincent Bradley, who is uh, uh, a former student here, and somebody like you, graduates, who went on from here and went to school and worked and trained and learned. And Mr. Bradley, tonight, is Huntington College's state coordinator for evening bachelor's degree programs. We're so proud of Ms. Vincent. It didn't come by accident. It came by hard work. And it came from listening to what these people back here had to say. We have with us uh, Courtney Hart from Huntington College, representing Huntington. Courtney, are you still here with us? Yeah, right there. Stand up, please. You're, you're a guest in here. We have Councilman William Taylor. Councilman Taylor is here with us. Councilman Taylor, thank you so much. We have Councilman John Biggs of the city of Bay Manette. Councilman, thank you. We have a friend of mine, and I want to thank Thank him for being here. Mr. Nathan Mosley. Nathan, would you please stand? Where are you? Right there. The husband, the husband of one of our instructors who's always so kind to be with us. Listen, folks, thank you. Thank you for coming. Feel welcome. I hope you enjoyed your, uh, your celebration dinner. And uh, graduates, when you get that diploma tonight, and you leave us tonight, 
Let me give you this little bit of information. This is just the beginning. And if you don't remember anything else tonight, remember this. Almost. Okay? Almost is never enough. Think about that. Almost is never enough. That's in your home life with your family. That's in your job and your preparation. That's in your further education. That's in your Christian walk. Almost is never enough. Now that's not even the commencement address. You've already got your money's worth. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, some of you may not know me. My name is Cassidy Harding, and I was your 2018 SGA president. I was also on the cheerleading team. I would just like to start by saying that the past two years at Coastal Alabama have been the absolute best two years of my life, and I have the people sitting in front of me to thank for that, but most importantly, I have the people sitting behind me to thank for that. Um, if you would have asked me two or three years ago if I would attend Coastal Alabama or a community college, I probably would have been like, no, that's not for me. But things happened, and I ended up breaking my ankle right before a big university's cheerleading tryouts, and my dreams to cheer at a big university were crushed. One of my former coaches asked me if I, if I had ever heard of Coastal Alabama, and I said no. And he said, well, their cheer tryouts are at the end of this month, so your ankle will have more time to heal, and I know the coach is there, so I can put in a good word for you. I just want you to think about it. And my first thought was, I'm not going to community college. But after thinking about it, I decided to try out. I made the team and was offered a full scholarship to attend Coastal Alabama. There is no doubt in my mind that God led me here for a reason. What I thought was going to be the worst thing ever turned out to be the best. God works in crazy ways, but sometimes he has to break you to make you a better person. Because of God's faithfulness, I ended up at Coastal Alabama, and it has been the best two years of my life. Coastal has opened up so many different doors for me and given me so many different opportunities and best friends. I have gone on many different leadership retreats and cheer trips, and I truly believe Coastal Alabama has made me a better person. The professors, janitors, lunch ladies, and the rest of the faculty here are all amazing, and I never thought that they would be able to imp impact my life in such a positive way. But they know almost every student here personally, and they want us to succeed just as much as we want to. I would really like to thank Celeste Robertson for being my role model. You are amazing and the person I strive to be like. You have made me into the woman I am today, and I am so grateful for all your advice and help with everything. Next year, I'm excited to announce that I'll be attending the University of South Alabama. I can only pray and hope that my next step in life will be as great as my time at Coastal. I will be moving on to the University of South Alabama to finish what I have started here at Coastal. I'm also excited that I'll be able to continue my cheerleading career at South, as a South Alabama Jag, but I'll always be thankful for my time here at Coastal. And as we move on to bigger things, I would like to wish everyone the best future. Jeremiah 2911 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And although we may not know exactly what the future holds, God does know, and he always has our best interest in mind. Thank you. I have the honor and, and personal privilege to introduce to you tonight, and, and, and most of you know this gentleman who's, who's coming forward, but Representative Alan Baker uh, is our commencement speaker tonight, our graduation speaker tonight, and uh, Representative Baker was elected to the Alabama House of Representatives in 2006. He is a native of Bruton. He graduated from Miller High School, T.R. Miller in Bruton. He attended East Central Community College in Decatur, Mississippi. And he received his BS degree from Auburn University with a major in history and a minor in political science. 
Representative Baker devoted 27 years of service to public education. As a classroom teacher, history teacher, his education career began as a teacher coach in Phoenix City, Alabama. He eventually returned home to Bruton where he taught history and coached football and track at T.R. Miller High School. During his tenure as a coach, he won 10 his teams that he served as head, co head coach, his teams won 10 state championships. That's, that's an almost unheard of accomplishment. <laughs> For those accomplishment, accomplishments, Rep Representative Baker was recognized and honored by being inducted into the Alabama High School Athletic Association Sports Hall of Fame in Montgomery. Representative Baker is married to his high school sweetheart, and I've already introduced her to you, but Kaki, who is a retired educator also and a realtor. They attend First Baptist Church of Bruton, where he is and in, 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 uh, where he is in, plays the drums for the praise band at First Baptist in Bruton, Alabama. Shortly after his election into the legislature, he was drafted by the other musicians in the legislature to form a band. And I've heard them perform uh, in the past at several events. He's a drummer. Do you ever play rock and roll? That's so, how, how about country? Yeah. All right. And I know you play gospel. Yeah. So. Um, my serving in the legislature, Representative Baker has been especially focused on economic development, workforce development, and education is, uh, issues. He, uh, having retired from publication, uh, from public education in 2005, Representative Baker, to our advantage, has been serving as a full-time legislator on a part-time legislator's pay. He's been across this state and this nation in representing Alabama, representing the citizens of his district and the citizens of this state. Now, that's all good factual information and, and, and impressive. But let me talk about something I think is equally, if not more so, important. And that's a quality. I don't care how much education you get, graduates. And there's a quality that is a part of a person's life that defines really who they are and what they accomplish. Uh, and that's success as a leader. A leader. Are you born to be a leader? This is a question that's intrigued people for so many years and so many books have been written on what is real leadership and trying to define it. Are you born with it? Do you learn it? I don't know the answer to that. I think a leader just takes the opportunity and the advantage to make a difference and to move forward. The leader doesn't always have to be the person in front. The leader can be anywhere in an organization and, and exercise leadership and help people and help themselves to become successful. In my opinion, one of the most important hallmarks of leadership is results. I've read you some of the results of what Representative Baker has accomplished in his career. For coaches, leadership is measured by the results of their athletic contests, their number of wins and losses, 10 state championships as a high school coach, almost unheard of. For teachers, leadership is measured by their students' test results and their graduation rates and their success after leaving here, you, you will be amazed at how your teachers keep up with you after leaving here. I keep up with students that I have known from my first job at the University of Georgia 
after finishing graduate school at Alabama many, many years ago. And I keep up with those students and they keep up with me. And there's no greater feeling when I get a phone call from them or when they drop by the office with their children and remind me of who they were and talk about how important a part I played in their lives. There's, there, 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 there's nothing like the, that feeling and our teachers know that. I, I share that some in my life. For soldiers, leadership is measured by the results of battles won and victories. For ministers, leadership is measured by the number of new converts in the increased church membership. For business leaders, leadership is measured by sales results. For journalists, leadership is measured by increased circulation and Pulitzer Prizes. It's absolutely clear that our speaker tonight measures up to all of those. I saw something in Representative Baker, and I have to share this, in, starting in November. I saw his leadership. I saw his compassion. One of our Faulkner Coastal Alabama family members. In November, her daughter, her only child, took her own life because of the bullying that that child had to endure in her high school and junior high. As parents, our worst nightmare. But Laura Burks, right here, and she didn't know I was gonna do this, but Laura Burks, after picking herself up off the floor so many times, and and having to deal with that trauma, her only child, her only child. So many people were call, praying for her. About 6,000 6, texts and, and comments on Facebook and Twitter. People offering prayers from all over this country. Families and people who've experienced the, the tragedy of bullying but she worked with Representative Baker, with his leadership and his influence in the Alabama legislature. Laura was able to go to Montgomery on two occasions and speak to, to legislators and committee meetings. She was able to speak a second time to educational leaders, the head of the AEA for the state of Alabama, the Superintendents Association, uh, every educational leader in the state to talk about bullying and what a unique perspective she was able to offer from that. Representative Baker provided her the opportunities to meet with these groups and he was right there by her side. And as a result of their leadership, the Alabama legislature did something that's almost unheard of. They passed 100% the first legislative bill in the history of this state that calls bullying, bullying. You think about that. Up until, yeah. Up until that bill, it was called harassment. Harassment, you know. This bill is called anti-bullying, cyberbullying, and in-person bullying. Passed 100%. And it has teeth in it for the punishment of bullies. Some of you have been bullied in your lives and in your and some of you have had children to be bullied. 
if you do nothing else in your legislative career, what you did for the children of Alabama will live on forever. Thank you so much, Dr. Branch. Um, it is indeed a, a delight to be before you this evening uh, to the graduates. If you might indulge me just one brief, quick moment. I know this is your time, and I want this to be about you, but I, I do have just a small little something to ask of you, and that is my wife, Kaki. Today is her birthday. <laughs> she's, allow she's allowed me to... <laughs> She has allowed me to be with the uh, graduation group earlier this afternoon and also now before you today. So anyway, I wanted to acknowledge her. Thank you, Kaki, for allowing me this opportunity to be here with this group. But this is about you, graduates. And uh, I, I would like to just personally uh, thank Dr. Branch for the leadership role that you provide uh, as I've, I've shared with others, I continue to be so impressed and in admiration of his zest for life, his passion for people, his enthusiasm, and his leadership. As much so, the ones that have already been acknowledged, these faculty and staff members behind me, are such a huge part of the magnificent opportunities that are provided to students in the educational arena across these assorted communities. And for that, then, I applaud the, the faculty or personally make a, a somewhat recognition of what you do for all of this area. To the graduates, uh, I can already see uh, in the excitement in your eyes, as I've seen some of you as I first began to walk in uh, prior to the actual ceremony, and then now as I, I see you, I can tell that you have that excitement moving forward, and this is a special day, a special opportunity for you to be recognized in such a deserving way. To the family members, and extended family members, friends, and guests, uh, I thank you for the support that you provide to your special graduate by being present today for this recognition and accomplishment that they'll be receiving. Before sharing the uh, more serious commencement address and heartfelt that I would be providing here in just a moment. It has become a trademark and tradition of mine to provide some lighthearted, amusing quotes directed towards graduates. And these come from a variety of assorted individuals, some of which you might would recognize. So as not to break from my trademark tradition, I want to share a few of those brief quotes to you. From the country comedian Jeff Foxworthy, I have never been jealous, not even when my dad finished fifth grade a year before I did. From Robert Orban, a graduation ceremony is an event where the commencement speaker tells thousands of students dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. Mark Twain, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. From Gary Bolden, your families are extremely proud of you. You can't imagine the sense of relief they are experiencing. This would be a most opportune time to ask for money. <laughs> and from Dr. Zeus, 
You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You are on your own, and you know what you know. You are the guy who will decide where to go. And now back to the actual commencement address. Graduates, I want you to recognize this is indeed a stepping stone to the next chapter in your life as you advance towards your career or trying to advance in a career. I encourage you to seek out and express gratitude to those who are giving of themselves to invest in your life. This includes many of those that are behind me, the instructors, the staff, also community leaders, many of the family that is assembled here, or not maybe that were able to attend as well, and others that have invested in your life. So I would strongly urge you to recognize those that care about you. They care about your future. They've already been making an investment in your life and will continue to support you. So please take time to express that gratitude to those that care so much about you. And to the graduates, have you heard the term BP? The two letters, BP. For some, BP might withstand for what we've experienced here on the coastal counties of Alabama, the British Petroleum BP oil spill. For others that are athletically inclined, when you hear BP, you're, might, you might would think of batting practice for softball, for baseball. The BP that I'm referring to, this stands for best practices. Best practices. It's very commonplace in circles of government or even in the private sector. So whether we're talking about at the governmental level, you're talking about agencies, departments, that will try to look at best practices, not just within their organization, because actually they're trying to look, that is, away from what's already operating within their particular system. And they want to see what is going on outside of that, if there's a better way to be more efficient, more effective in what they're doing for positive results, for success. It happens in, uh, in school settings. I currently serve with the education, the SREB, the Southern Regional Education Board. We are completing our third year on this teacher prep commission on which I serve, in which we're trying to look at best practices across the nation. Several things that are going on that are, that are quite good in other states, Michigan, Arizona. That's not to say there's not good things happening in Alabama, but we want to try to elevate and improve on what we have. And so being a part of that commission allows us to look at best practices going on in other states. So what I, I want to do on a very similar wavelength, my intent through this message tonight is to allow you as graduates to hear some best practices towards personal and professional growth, some things for you to consider things that already have been proven to be successful and might would allow you towards that uh, more strongly and maybe accelerate that path towards success by hearing some of these best practices tonight. Not necessarily anything new for some of you, but maybe some of it will be for you. Sadly, there are some of those people who operate their lives in a very shallow and superficial way, uh, just waiting for something good to happen that might propel their life into something greater. But on a positive and uplifting note, I want you to recognize that within each one of you is a best practices personal power that enables you and I to control our actions, to make choices, and to overcome adversities, and to conquer seemingly impossible challenges. Many people find this source of strength and personal power through prayer and faith. One, sp one spirituality or a connection to a, a higher power. In addition, there's another strong power within you, your attitude. I've observed this attitude trait often through my life experiences. Attitude is such a critical factor for success or failure. How a person handles adversity shapes their attitude. Adversity is preparation for success. Sometimes there are those who love us who attempt to lessen the sting of adversity. They attempt to shield us because of the shortcomings that we might 
have had or faced or experienced. And they make excuses for the undesired outcome. I would strongly caution to be careful towards that, even those that are here in support of these graduates. When there are those that, that allow the excuses to become crutches for failures, for, for, for shortcomings in life, it makes it a very difficult path to elevate your status or to advance in that career or personal growth. Just as steel sharpens steel, so does adversity serve to toughen, shape, and develop our inner core. Our inner core consists of our character, our values, attitude, and faith. By the way, you don't have to go looking for adversity to become a stronger person. You won't even have to wait very long as adversity is lurking just around the corner. The obstacles or challenges that you have no control over, meet them head on. And don't make excuses for that less than desirable outcome. I experienced this somewhat on occasion in my coaching career of those parents and somewhat maybe trying to lessen the sting of defeat for their child and to want to make excuses. If it hadn't been raining, if the official had made this call, if this athlete had been playing then and not injured, then it might would have been a different outcome. And those only seem to perpetuate, I think, an attitude of being dependent on crutches, excuses, and which doesn't allow one to elevate their status by maybe taking a step back and seeing, what could I have done better? What could the team have done better? And so I challenge you as graduates to recognize that, not to let excuses become crutches for those shortcomings in your life. Since attitude is such a critical best practices human trait that can be shaped, there are several positive components of attitude worth sharing as best practices. This includes having a passion for life. Recognize that life is a gift. You want to live it, enjoy it, share it with others, celebrate it, and make life more fulfilling for others. People that create a positive approach in most any situation they are confronted with will spark healthy attitudes around them. Also another trait of attitude or component of attitude would be having a heart of service. Have a willingness to sacrifice for others, to make life more than just what you get out of life, but how you can elevate the lives of others. Also attitude is shaped by character. You need to have substance. Be a rock, an anchor that holds secure when the adversities, the winds, the waves, the difficulties of life threaten. Also, for that healthy attitude, you need to have vision. Set a course. Have a target towards which to aim. Don't just meander, floundering through life, waiting for something good to happen. Have a target, a destination. I'm reminded on that note, uh, I shared this earlier, that uh, I not necessarily a farm boy, so to speak, but uh, my parents both loved gardening, just the backyard garden variety, but it wasn't just one garden. Next door, my grandparents also had a garden, so I also assisted with that. And then also just within the same block, my aunts also had a garden. And so I had the opportunity to get a, a little bit seasoned uh, on a small scale doing uh, some plowing once the land had been tilled or the areas that we were gardening had been tilled and using a hand plow to be able to run that furrow so that the seeds could be dropped in on that furrow. What I discovered very quickly with my dad's guidance was that I wasn't very good at plowing a straight path. Not until he gave me some better directions, more clear. And once I quit trying to look behind me, to see where I had gone instead of looking ahead of me where I wanted to go or where I needed to go. And he did. He showed me where I could put a little sort of stick down at the end of each row and then stay focused on that. And he was right. My rows were much more straight from that point going forward. But there's a life lesson in that. And that is, don't be so concerned about what's behind you. I think there are those that want to use that as a crutch for trying to advance forward. Look in front of you. Set your focus on that target, on that mark, and your life has a much greater chance to be more straight. 
Attitude is such a critical factor to making, in making the most of our lives. Actually, the circumstances surrounding our lives are less important to an outcome. Rather, our attitude is what seems to be one of the most important factors contributing towards success. A really strong example that has hit home with me involves a psychologist professor at the university level that was conducting a study, and this study involved twins, sets of twins. And in this study, part of the study of this uh, psychology professor was knowing that twins having somewhat very similar experiences growing up in those developmental years, that they oftentimes would be experiencing a lot of those same circumstances surrounding their lives. But then as these twins then progressed to become young adults in whatever type of career path, uh, they, it wasn't necessarily that the twins then uh, had the similar outcomes of success. And so that was part of somewhat the thrust of that particular study. But in that study, there was a set of twins, two young men that as boys experienced a father who was an alcoholic and meandered from job to job, was not very, or not perceived as very successful in the community. As each of these two young men, now as adults, twins, that they recognized uh, that they had this opportunity to be a part of this volunteer survey and participate, uh, they were interviewed separately by this professor conducting this, this study and what would eventually become a report. And as a concluding question to some of what the interview was in, being conducted with each of these two young men separately, and by the way, one of the, the, these two twins, one of them became very successful became a medical doctor, highly successful in the community, whereas the other son became much like the father, an alcoholic, could not keep a job, floated from job to job. So as each man was asked a concluding question, which is this concluding question, uh, quite um, fascinating, the response that each young man gave as they received this question. So keep in mind that these two young men being interviewed separately, not in the same room, so the question was, a concluding question was, are there any other contributing factors that you want to share with me, that is to the professor, that you want to share with me that has brought you to this point in your life and shaping your life? Well, the young man that became like the alcoholic father very quickly, sort of disgustedly stated, what would you expect with a father like mine? The successful son, at a later time, as he was interviewed in that same concluding question, are there any other contri contributing factors that help to shape your life to bring you to this point in your life that you would like to share? And the highly successful son gave this answer. What would you expect with a father like mine? Same response. Same response. It was the attitude that was the difference. The perception by each was different based on their attitude. So I strongly encourage you as graduates to recognize that. A lot of it is how we confront life, not trying to look at some of the shortfalls or shortcomings, but trying to look forward for the positives in life or what we can overcome in, in as I've already mentioned, adversity uh, and trying to deal with those challenges of life. I'd like to very quickly just share some other brief components that I think are so important, what I consider best practices of that healthy attitude. And this would be to develop an attitude of teamwork, that life involves other people, learn how to relate to others, cooperation is a key, learn to create an atmosphere of unity and working together to maximize the energy and efforts of all involved. Be bold, have a willingness to defend and stand up for what is right not necessarily what is popular. Perseverance, be willing, aggressive, and decisive in attacking the tough obstacles or difficult challenges before you. Take pride, take pride in all that you perform. Any job worth doing is worth doing well. Painters and sculptors will often leave a distinguishing mark, a signature to identify their artwork, oftentimes somewhat inconspicuous. You can leave a positive mark by how you perform your work, large or small task. Opportunities abound all around us to leave positive impressions by how we work. 
In closing, each one of you is special in having a part in building towards a better tomorrow. Make a special effort to recognize and appreciate those around you who continue to invest in your lives. Build and develop that inner power within you through your faith and a strong, healthy attitude which you control. I'll leave you with one final graduation quote, and this comes from Orrin Hatch. There's a good reason they call these ceremonies commencement exercises. Graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. I love you all, congratulations graduates. And now the moment that you've all been waiting on. <laughs> Will the candidates please rise? <laughs> Dr. Branch, we present to you the Coastal Alabama Community College 2018 candidates for graduation. The faculty of Coastal Alabama Community College certify that these students have fulfilled all of their requirements for their degrees and certificates. Thank you, Vice President Houston. And uh, I'm going to convert these degrees, but I want, to, I want to just say something. I've been watching this mother over here <laughs> with that baby, and I want to tell you my appreciation and admiration for motherhood, and here you are. Wow, what mothers do, what mothers do. How tired you must be. And I apologize for my long-windedness. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Alabama Community College System Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty and staff of Coastal Alabama Community College, as a result of completing the requirements as prescribed by the college, it is my pleasure and my personal honor to confer on each of you your earned degree. Please step forward to the front as your name is called. Now, candidates, would the rest of you be seated so the folks in back of you can see what's going on? <laughs> Christina Marie Allen. Christina Marie Allen. Olivia Page Allen. Monica Anderson. Aldo Aria. Angela Bailey. Ken Bailey. Tyra McKenzie Bailey. Matthew Banning. Chandon Alley Beach. Scarlett Nicole Benedict. Scarlet 
Kaylin Brooke Bernal. Michelle Jewel Bozeman. Marley Brooklyn Bramwit. Loretta Sue Brown. Stephen Bush. Brittany Bow. Brooklyn Michelle Bird. Namani Joyelle Campbell. Garrett Shavers. Materia Chavez Milton. Brittany Danielle Cheese. Michelle Wiles Cohen. Denise Brianna Coleman. Jonathan Cook. Matthew. Matthew Cook. Nesca Cooper. Joshua Tower Coward. Chanel Crook. Chanel Crook. <laughs> Olivia Crosby. <laughs> Jackson Cross. Brittany Nicole Culpepper. <laughs> Elizabeth Davies. <laughs> Gerardo Francisco Daviala Alada. Stephen Hunter Davis. Sarah Lynn Day. Morgan DeGraff. Logan B. Denmark. Minnie Dixon. Bobby Duxworth. James Duckworth. Jordan Dunn. Ashley Carlina Edwards. Yeah. 
Rebecca Etheridge. Anthony Lorenzo Amal Izel. Jakia Jermaine Farley. <laughs> Sylvia Lucy Fonseca. Brianna Franklin. Zachary Chase Gebhardt. William James Gillian. William James Gillian. <laughs> Hannah Lee Godwin. Caitlin Nicole Graham. Gray. Gray. Peyton Gray. Wadona. Crystal Wadona Green. Madison Michelle Griggs. Marshall Hardiman. Marshall Hardiman. Bethany Brianne Harness. Lauren Hart. Hadamer. Hannah Faith Hadamer. Yeah. Leslie Helton. <laughs> Charles Herman. Sarah Hewitt. Travis Higginbotham. Travis Higginbotham. <laughs> Kaylee Joy Holly. Jamika Hopper. Jamika Hopper. Michael House. I know. Trey. Trey Howard. Barbara Jean Howell. Deja J. Hughes. Amy Charlene. Amy Charlene Iscor Berry. Jacinta. Roga. Erica Jancito Roga. Amber Nicole Jackson. Morgan Elizabeth Jimerson.
Cassandra Jones. Timothy Lamar Jones, Jr. Savannah Nicole Kelly. Haley Anna Kendrick. Caleb Kinmar. Carly Kennard. Carlanda King. Paul King. Brian Candy Cottrell. Zachary Chandler Landrum. Kenya Lapine. <laughs> Kiara Marie Lewis. Blake Kelly Long. Michelle Jean Shania Long. Kennedy Trene Martin. Xavier Jamal Martin. <laughs> Heather Marie Martasi. <laughs> Morgan Brooke McDaniel. Matthew Lee McDonald. Sarah Catherine Meganson. Justin Middleton. Emily Miller. Whitney Murphy. Whitney Hannah Nettles. Paul Not Turf. Julia Sloan Norman. Nancy Northcutt. Caleb Orozco. Crystal Owen. Valia Parker.
Carly Parks. Sean Payne. William Terrell Penn. Amanda Phillips. Hannah Pledger. Marquisha Pope. <laughs> Melissa Danielle Pope. <laughs> Mackenzie Carol Portella. Alicia Shanae Reed. <laughs> Jacob Reed. <laughs> Naima Sakidra Reed. Morgan Kirsten Reese. Savannah Sue Rhodes. Tatiana S. Robinson. Brianna Jordan Rochelle. Hey, Haley Sawyer. Okay. Caitlin Noel Snyder. Spencer Shaw. Chelsea Leanne Shepherd. Amber Marlene Smith. Meredith Diane Smith. <laughs> Courtney D.C. Stedham. Kimberly Gail Stone. Wilbert Sweeney Jr. Erica Talbot. Shannon Tauver. <laughs> Olga Tinku. <laughs> Ro 
Radian Tinku. Cassie Touchstone. Bo Touchstone. <laughs> Jessica Tuberville. Josh Turner. Madison Elizabeth Ulrich. Haley Elizabeth Underwood. Carly Michaela Wade. Julie Danielle Wagner. Lauren Joanne Walker. Hernesha Wallace. Abigail Ward. John William Warner. Stormy Victoria Watson. Naja Michelle Weathersby. Joshua Wesley. Jeff Weiss. Danielle Nicole Williams. Ashley Elizabeth Nicole Wilson. Casey Denise Wilson. John Tyler Wilson. Tristan Wilson. Landon C. Winburn. Brianna Lynn Wyndham. Adrian Wright. Danielle Roberta Pugh. Ariel DeAndrea Karstoffen.
<laughs> in the first chapter of Proverbs, verse 5, King Solomon, one of the wisest of the Hebrew leaders, proclaimed, A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. For the last two years, you've sought direction and counsel from your faculty, the staff, and from the loved ones in your academic pursuits. Graduates, as you transition into the next phase of life, continue to seek knowledge, seek wisdom, and understanding. And with God's grace, all will be well. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to celebrate the accomplishments of these students. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bestowing in their hearts the love of knowledge, the love of wisdom, and most importantly, the love of you. As they move forward, we pray that you continue to be a fixture and a foundation in their lives. Keep them safe. Nurture that love of, of knowledge and use them to be a positive change in the world. As we close the ceremony, Lord, we pray that your peace resides in these graduates with their families with the coast, and with the Coastal Alabama Community College family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.